Now, Kate, it would be so wonderful if you could tell us a little bit about your, yeah, your story with Instagram. Because I know that you picked up your Instagram account um, about a year ago and it's just really flown and done really well. So it'd be great if you could share your story of how you got started with the profile and your experience and, and all of the things. Yeah, I mean, we, we're Kemp Food Hubs Folkestone and we actually sort of morphed from a pre-existing market called Local Ethical Affordable Food. And um, they had a really great Instagram. It was quite small, um, that had a really lovely kind of family feel to it. And then when they, in the transition, several people left Leaf and so on and, and kind of it, it just wasn't really used so it became quite an inactive profile very much like you're saying so the um the algorithm had kind of dropped us out and although I followed um Leaf you know and it had been renamed and and my colleague Luke sort of started to do it but it was a little bit infrequent and so there would be lots of posts and then no posts and sometimes it would literally be order cycle opening order cycle closing with no information in between so um, I kind of did what I normally do and just said, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll take it over without much of a, a clue, really. I mean, I have my own personal Instagram and stuff. But um, and the very first post that I posted was was just um, my fellow coordinator, Mel and um, Luke, who was running the hub at that point, and myself just kind of brainstorming because we hadn't had any photographs of um, us as a new team as you know the people that were that were kind of going now we'd had lots of photographs of produce and obviously it, it had changed and I sort of started to get my teeth into it and then um I, I feel like I start every webinar that I do with this and then the pandemic hit but it, it, you know once again it just began to change everything because it didn't feel um it didn't feel right just to be posting come and get your vegetables and and do this and to be selling because we were getting lots of messages emails um new customers people who were quite scared or were isolating and so the, the instagram took a little bit of a shift um into every now and again i would just try and post and in a lot of the, the text content um just sharing you know like it was difficult day to day or you know but we're all in it together things you know the kind of conversations that we were actually having with our customers and the interactions that we were having on the email or by direct message or when we when they came to pick up their boxes or when we delivered to them um we started kind of sharing some of that or I started some sharing some of that and that that had a really positive feedback and and actually the kind of the the, the growth of the Instagram in particular came very much with the customers because the the followers just went up and up and up and up and up and at the same time so did our customer base um and it was it was strange really because I suppose for me um I mean my, the children were coming to work with me um every week we were there till 10 o'clock and they were falling asleep on coats in the corner and <laughs> eating out of the order box on a Tuesday while we were there um but the rest of the time I was locking down with them there were two periods where I had to isolate as well um, so we were literally all going going through the same thing. So that the Instagram actually evolved very much with our customers. So it it was quite a um, well, I don't know if mutually beneficial is the right phrase to use when we're talking about you know a, a pandemic, but it, it 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 grew really quite organically. So um, it's it's quite it's something that's quite sort of personal to me. I think it's something that you know it's a uh, whenever I think of Instagram, I think of it as a means of communication it's more like with Facebook you have um, you know you have your posts and people interact but it feels much more business-like um and people can follow you and you've got no idea who they are um you know you wouldn't dream of friend requesting them because you followed them that would just be really odd so with the Instagram people follow you and you can follow them back and so it, it you can actually you get a feel for, for your customers you know it's much easier if somebody doesn't order you I, I know if they're on holiday that makes me sound like a stalker I'm not a stalker but it's kind of but I'll know because they'll they'll be posting nice pictures from a beach somewhere or you know a nice British beach somewhere this year um but there's something less formal about it and something that makes you as a business much more approachable which is why I particularly like Instagram um and the the interactions even when I've had negative comments we've had a couple of people we've never had any complaints as such but just people saying well you know we can't do a Tuesday we can only do this day or when we're promoting our vegan market, for example, um, 
sometimes we may get a comment and then somebody will come in and, and just say, you know, like animals don't want to die or if I'm producing meat, then you know, meat content, there, there might be something on there. But people are general, it, it, does, it never seems to descend into the, the way that it can on Facebook. Um, it's, and I think that's because it is a bit more personal on Instagram. So Facebook, you know, you can potentially have keyboard warriors, um, you know, that they do that thing. But on Instagram, it's more accountable because it's generally speaking from somebody that you're following back. Um, and it feels like much more of a community. Um, and it, the, thing that, the other thing that I love about Instagram is people have selected to follow you. So I know when I look at my Instagram feed, my personal one, it will be businesses that I like, the kind of things that I have, you know, like I, it's generally, it's mostly food and dogs, my Instagram, but they're all, you know, that it's all there. They're all things that I like to see. So you're automatically setting the context of something that somebody is enjoying participating in. You're not necessarily, um, it's less likely you're less likely to be wedged in in the middle of a load of political stuff or whatever's doing the rounds or memes or things you're already placed in somebody's favorite categories because they're following you so you're, you're kind of you, you've got more of an in and that's another thing that I really like as well um it's it, the, the message process is less formal so I know when I get messages from the Facebook quite often I'll get the generic one which says um, hi I have a question can you help or one of the selected prompts that you get when you go in it's much more business-like and Instagram we very often get I'll quite often get someone saying I've forgotten to come and get my order can I come and get it now we'll get those really kind of quite personal immediate response as opposed to like a business inquiry which I also really like it's much less formal um, in that way but it's still you know a business um area so we can have these we do have a lot of queries but it's it's just yeah the way that, you, that it just feels different and i think it feels different for our customers as well um i kind of floundered a bit through through the instagram and was, was spending a lot of time writing posts and they were going quite well and then Kay arrived <laughs> and um and everything became much much easier so if you haven't watched any of the, the previous webinars or i know obviously case done like a bit of a master class today they are an absolute lifesaver it took me about probably about three months or so to really transform who the audience was and who we were interacting with um but it, it means that now even on the posts that i might get kind of like you know like fewer likes on like sort of 30 odd posts most of them will be from customers or from local people and that's really, really important. Um, so I don't follow every single person back. I will have a quick look at their profile. And I do this in the morning. I get up um, or I sit in bed just for half an hour and I will just go through, look at any new followers. Um, and I'll kind of like just do a quick audit every morning of, of people that I'm following. If it looks like they're miles and miles and miles away, I might unfollow them and just try and keep everything more centered to Kent. Um, and it's just, it's just a really handy tool to kind of like, Again, it's it's more personal. The algorithm feels much more personal than Facebook. I really like Facebook, but it's just very different. Um, and there are certain people, for example, if there's a particular product coming up that I know I can just tag somebody in and just say, oh, hi, you were asking about this or, oh, you, you, you know, you were doing that. And, and again, it's much, I think as well, because people have the anonymity of their Insta tags. Um, so it's kind of, you know, like, for example, we have a lady called a crust eaten now. I, I know what her name is. I pack her order every week, but I can converse with her and just say, oh, hi, this is this is here. I know you're waiting. You go, great, planting them in. Whereas on Facebook, you've got your picture there and your name and someone can click to your personal profile. Instagram is a little bit more sort of selective. So it actually enables the customers to feel more comfortable about interacting without everybody thinking, you know, oh, gosh, what's she put in her basket this week or what's she buying? It, it's quite a, yeah, it, it's just, it has a friendlier feel to it. Um, one thing that I mean that I would say about using the insights as well, they were uh, sorry, I'm not I'm not very techy, so I'm I am used sorry yes. So I've got a question from Rachel. Do I post on um, Facebook too? I do. Yeah, I use both. I very often do the same post on two. And for example, I'm going to I do use the Creator Studio because I'm going to Brighton this weekend. So I've got all of my posts for the weekend scheduled in before I go. I've been taking photographs in the run up and just done a bit extra every day. And then hopefully no one's going to miss me. And I'm just going to check. I'm going to check just the account in the evening every day if I haven't had a gin or two and uh, just make sure there's nothing that I need to respond to. But I'm very lucky because there's three of us that coordinate. So even if I'm not on the ball, very often Claire or Mel will, will come in and they'll comment. They don't actually use the Instagram, but they comment as themselves because they they know the answer to the to the question. Um, 
but just go back to the to the insights um every now and then as well i will I, I can see when the highest traffic is so i can see when the best time is to post um and that is really really useful so i can see for example um saturday mornings are really good monday evenings for some reason are quite good as well um but the weekend in general is quite good but one thing that really intrigues me about it and i, and I do quite often have a week where I'll, I'll post at different times because my um, insights show me that most people that, that view the Instagram are middle-aged women um, who tend to use Instagram about the same time as me, a middle-aged woman does. So I need to make sure that I'm not appealing to middle-aged women because I am a middle-aged woman and, and that they're not just kind of picking up on that because that's when middle-aged women have got children that haven't got up yet or maybe the only time that they've sat down and had a cup of tea that day. So I do make sure that once a month I would just try and put some things out at different times and see if it changes it a little bit um, and and also talk to the customers and I do say to them when they come along um, particularly those that aren't middle-aged women um, you know did, did you see the Instagram post this week or did you did you do that and and they do seem to generally see it so I, I, I'm fairly sure it's working but it's something that I'm, I'm really aware of that I don't kind of settle into a rut with it and I, I keep try and keep it um try and keep it in a way that it talks to people other than me or versions of me and um and I think it, it's quite easy to think isn't it that it's mostly middle-aged women that do the shopping but I don't think that is the case because it's definitely not all middle-aged women that come to collect the shopping so um I need to be quite aware the other thing um is with the the hashtags is we I try and link in with community groups as much as possible and I look in and see what sort of hashtags they're using in terms of things like you know like buy local support local and just just see what if I see our, our customers names popping up I don't do it every day but maybe once a week I'll have a quick look through other popular I don't know restaurants food services um we've got some great sort of like foodie venues around here and I have a look and see what our customers are, are looking at and then potential customers are looking at and sometimes I switch the ha hashtags up and um, buy a lister and um and and put some in there that I know local people are following um because I'm not actually cool enough to know what hashtags are going to be using I have to kind of like stalk around the other profiles to um to see but again kind of repeating quite a lot of what Kay's already said keeping it personal is really really important it's um I find it really strange that people love photographs of us because we all kind of literally die a little bit inside every time we post a photograph of us. But I think people like to see who is packing their order. I think people like to see um, our traders as well. They like to see who's producing what they're making and they like to see the process. So whenever I can, I think I drive everybody mad, but I'm, I'm really kind of shutter happy. I've always got my phone in my hand and sometimes people, you know, turn up to drop something off and it'll be like, can I just take your photograph? And, you know, it, it's just something. And, and even if I don't use them, I have a, on my iPad, I transfer everything from my phone just onto my iPad, I airdrop it. And I keep them, particularly at the market, so that I've got fresh stuff for the next market from the last one, so that we're not constantly reusing the, the same photographs. And, some of our suppliers have got beautiful professional photog uh, photographs and they're amazing on the iPhone. They look great when you're selecting your products, but the, the Instagram, the, if, you, if you actually scroll down while you're looking at it, you've got people in their garden, you've got people that photograph their dinner, you've got people who have done a lovely photograph of their dog on the beach. And sometimes a professional shot with a blank background doesn't, it might stand out a little bit, but it doesn't necessarily convey the same feeling. So. I quite often will, I mean, I buy a lot of the products. So if I make myself, myself a cup of coffee in the morning, I might take a photograph of it in my garden with some poppies in the background. And that will be something, you know, that will that will go on um, because it's nice for people to place, um, to, to place what they're going to do. You know, you don't just want to look at a shiny lot of coffee beans, although it's very pretty. You know, you want to sort of like imagine yourself in that lifestyle sitting in the garden. I've got one piece of garden that's uh, presentable and that's where all the photographs get taken. I just move the garden furniture around <laughs> so that it looks like a different garden sometimes. Um, and things like, you know, if you are photographing something like a breakfast with multiple um, products in, you know, eggs, bacon, beans, we sell all of those things. Um, although it can look a bit generic, 
it's quite nice to actually put some text with it just saying you know we're off out today so sturdy breakfast or you know and just put a little bit of, of, of context to that but we don't need to worry because the beans are organic and the pork is free range and we might even be driving past the farm where the where the chickens laid our organic eggs it's kind you know that that kind of thing so it's it's building in again it's giving the profile a personality it's it's not a false profile at all but it is the life I would like to have and it is it's always the vision that I set out from my house within the morning before the children cry and start fighting or anything like that is that kind of you know that that shiny polished version and also be really really aware try and get your customers to use a hashtag I mean I always ask them to put Kent Food Hubs Folkestone or support local or something that I can I can search for because you can actually do a hashtag search so if people do that you can pull out anything that you might have missed so any stories repost any um anything that you're tagged in repost anything that you're hashtagged in repost because it's you never know who's watching and quite often people will say oh they look great I must try that and it could be a friend of theirs you know or someone else and and also be aware of who's posting we've got a couple of really prolific posters here who are quite well connected and they're they're customers of ours so one lady in particular is much more likely to get reposted because she lives next door to a really really well-known food critic in Folkestone so um it's you know yeah I kind of I'm desperate for him to I quite often comment under his comments and um, I really hope one day he's going to get a box but I'm not going to give up I'm like a, I am like a stalker there so that that will that will come along but you know if he gave us a mention that'd be great there's a local family who've got something like 20,000 followers um, with lots of small children so we've recently been talking about shall we give them a box you know shall we donate something to them and just see if they because they do do ads for other people so why not do an ad for something local um yeah, but again, I didn't want to just come out of the blue. So I've been commenting on, oh, your children are adorable, which they absolutely are gorgeous children. And then I saw them in Folkestone and um, one of the little ones ran into me. So I made a point of sort of saying hi and you know, didn't say who I was and then made sure my face was on an Instagram post later the same day. So that they might say, oh, that was the lady from earlier. So it's kind of, yeah, just just be vigilant as to where your customers are and who they are. Um, I'm just trying to think I've got any other oh absolutely Kay yes rope in friends and family don't just rely on yourself I have got photographs of one of my closest friends collecting her order and looking really happy my poor sister literally has to put lipstick on every time she comes and gets her order um, and make sure that her daughter's face isn't in shot because I'll be there because you can't just put everybody on Instagram um, but people really like to see that and and yeah just be really well I'm saying all this but just be really really honest don't be afraid to kind of share a bit bit of what you know what your hub is and, and what you're doing um you know we've all been through a really hideous year and actually we've all come out of it you know with our customers intact mostly and um as a bit more of a, a community of like-minded people and after such a strange strange year you know just photographs of products don't necessarily cut it people want to see who they are they want to in interact with us and and since we don't have a market anymore this is the closest that, that people can get from kind of sharing a little bit of of what we do and having those um conversations it, it's very it's been a very strange time i'm just having a look at what else oh humor yes questionable wedge all the time we had a, a very um popular post which was a red pepper i'm trying to think of how to say this in a it had a little pepper growing on the top of it and then a stalk growing over the top of the little pepper in um, a very suggestive way and everybody that looked at the, the pepper said the same thing and um, we posted it and we even ran a, a, a little kind of you know let us know if you've got the suggestive pepper in your box and somebody did so we shared that and it went on the stories and it was kind of like kind of viral in our little tiny town the um, dodgy looking pepper but yeah wonky veg is, is great we see all sorts of shapes of, of fruit and veg here and it's really nice because it really highlights the difference between us and one that you'll get that's been measured and, and packed in, in plastic and there's genuine fondness for, for your humorous veg um, supporting community projects sometimes we will repost very often actually we will repost things like the local pride Folkestone group they were giving away seeds so um, we were a seed pickup point they, they did um, wildflower riot bombs um, and not actual riot bombs but like for a, a riot of, of colour with their wildflowers and that was really lovely and that brought people down you know they weren't buying veg boxes they just came to get the free seeds but it was really nice to have conversations um, and, and to do that 
Um, we've got we're working a little bit with the community garden at the moment they've got an open day coming up so again it's nothing to do with us we're literally just sort of talking about them but then that still gets us more community followers because we are genuinely supporting them and people can see that there's nothing on the post saying oh and buy our veg it's it's a you know and, and people very often reciprocate which is really lovely too um so that that helps um try and mix up a video oh uh, yes so i try and do like a mixture of posts so they've all got the same feel about them but sometimes we do videos sometimes we do boomerangs sometimes there'll be something that i've made on canva which will be um kind of usually if i just have stock photos to work with i try and put a background in or something to make them a little bit more, more interesting um and then obviously the, pro the produce and then us you know i try and sort of ping us in there whenever possible and we just try and mix that up so that when you look at the grid we're kind of interspersed with vegetables and and, and other things so it, there's quite a variety of things um and oh the other thing is as well set a time aside to check daily if you're scheduling because i got caught out doing this the last time i scheduled some stuff i scheduled it and thought great and then i didn't set myself a time so i posted it i think it was four o'clock i scheduled it to do it and what i should have done because I, I did that because i had no time during the day to do it so i had a really busy three days because I, I have another job and um and i didn't i didn't look until the evening so had i although I was home, had I checked and not kind of mentally ticked it off, there were four or five comments. And if I'd have responded to them immediately, that just would have kept it bumped up. So it, it's just those things of just, just being aware of when you may be the most likely to get feedback from something and having a regular time to check. For me, it's usually first thing in the morning or kind of about six o'clock, but people people will kind of tune in at the same time. Um, and if it's if it's ignored, you quite you get a like, whereas if you respond immediately, you're, you're very often starting a dialogue that helps keep your post bumped up near the top. Um, and I think, I think that was pretty much everything other than, um, oh, other than producers. Um, lots of our producers, I'd say it's about half and half. They have an Instagram, but they don't necessarily post regularly. So I learned the hard way. If you're going to post about a producer that doesn't use Instagram very often, make sure you tell them, because if you get any queries and there's tumbleweeds blowing, sometimes it can do more harm than good so I'll, I'll be texting people and saying someone's asked you a question you know and it's kind of right so people know know to look out so don't always assume that everybody is as instagram savvy as you think they are they might need to know exactly when you're going to post and to look out for it and also if you're going to tag them in something we had someone i kept tagging and they said but well, we don't see any of it and it's like well if you just click on the tag box but because there's no words and they're all little symbols and things he had no idea and then he was very sweet and he was really grateful but he'd missed out on quite a lot of interaction that he he could have had because I, I assumed that he would know that he'd been tagged and and that he was you know he had questions with his some um, hashtagging but he, he didn't have his notifications on he didn't know how to put them on or why they weren't on and so it's when you're working with a big team yeah never assume that everybody knows knows what's happening because because people don't and sometimes it, it you can actually cause them quite a lot of stress um <laughs> which which is never nice so <laughs> yeah give everybody fair warning um and there's probably loads of things that i've missed um so yeah feel free to ask any questions um but i can't think of anything else to say for now rambled on for I mean, long so, enough so amazing <laughs> there's just so many awesome examples like that was just jam packed with a lot of the principles that I was talking about actually in action and also lots of examples that um, for food enterprises of yeah I just that was so valuable, thank you so much Kate.